Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask you the same question I ask the children today. What brings you comfort? Well, as I look around, no one brought their blankie with them this morning, and I don't see too many adult thumb suckers, so we've moved on from that. But I ask you on this second Sunday in Advent, as we continue to await good news on a Christmas morning, as we continue to prepare our hearts again to receive our Savior, what brings you comfort? Well, as you ponder that question, a few notes about our readings for today, particularly the reading from Isaiah and the reading from the Gospel of Mark. Mark relies heavily on Isaiah's prophetic word. In fact, we will hear it repeated throughout this year of Mark, these words hearkening back to the writings of 2nd Isaiah. And these two uh, readings for today have something in common in that they are the beginning of a book. Now you may say, uh, Pastor, back up a minute. Uh, I'm not a biblical scholar, but I can look in my bulletin and see that it's Mark chapter 1, and it's not the beginning of a new book of the Bible. It's Isaiah chapter 40. Well, suffice to say, Isaiah is actually a book that is broken into three parts. Three voices of Isaiah are recorded there, and though not marked as distinct books, Chapter 40 is always attributed to the second Isaiah voice or prophetic word. And so we begin each of these words of prophecy with a bold proclamation speaking into the context of the day. For Isaiah chapter 40, for this voice of second Isaiah, the word comes to a people in exile cut off from a land that they have known to be home in a place called Babylon, wondering if God's promises are true, longing for signs and fulfillment that God will indeed deliver them, and longing for a word of hope and comfort. A place of exile, both politically and spiritually, for God's people is a difficult place to be. Have you ever felt like you were in a time or a place of exile? Cut off from relationships that are meaningful to you due to a change in that relationship, whether death or distance? Have you ever felt that you were spinning your wheels, caught up in cycles that were destructive and you wondered if it would ever end? Have you ever felt far away from God, a place of exile where you wondered if God was really going to hear your cries? Whatever that exilic place has been for you, perhaps we can turn again to our friends from Charlie Brown and maybe Charlie Brown himself can lift up a little bit of that exilic voice within us. Listen to his words here. Sometimes I lay awake at night and I ask, where have I gone wrong? Then a voice says to me, there is going to, this is going to take more than one night. <laughs> or maybe you are caught up in so many anxieties in the day and in the world, you say, my anxieties have anxieties. <laughs> or maybe you awaken and sometimes you awake at night and ask, is life a multiple choice test or is it a true or false test? Then a voice comes to me and says, we hate to tell you this, but life is a thousand word essay. Or finally, perhaps you lament to a friend, I think I'm afraid to be happy because whenever I get happy, something always bad happens. Poor Charlie Brown. And sometimes this is where we find ourselves lamenting life and its woes. Certainly don't want to don't want to lessen the exiles that are happening for real and difficult places in our world, whether that be those days of reckoning for our political leaders or places of exile that those displaced from their homes and the fires of California find themselves. Whatever those places of exile, Isaiah brings a powerful word this day. Comfort. Comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly, O Jerusalem. 
Comfort is that powerful word that speaks into those places of longing to hear that God's fulfillment is now becoming real and near. But Isaiah has an interesting dialogue that happens within it. Just as much as that word of comfort, that cry out, the lifting up one's voice with this good news of deliverance is beckoning the one who needs it the most. There is pushback in Isaiah. The voice says, what should I cry out? Isn't this all just futile? A sense of hopelessness is expressed in Isaiah, especially in times of exile. And the words that Isaiah uses are these. All flesh is grass. The grass withers. The flower fades. See, isn't it all futile? But Isaiah's prophetic voice speaks all the more powerful, gives it that extra punch by saying, ah, yes, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. This is true comfort in the changes and chances of life, that there is one constant, that the word of the Lord stands forever. The Gospel of Matthew picks up on this same proclamation, the same powerful word of hope and promise and fulfillment, and that there is good news Mark begins with no genealogy of how Jesus came to be among the generations before him, no poetic literature like in the Gospel of John, but with a bold proclamation that simply says, this is the good news. Get ready. Hang on to your hats. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, and this is how it will unfold before you listen again to the words of the prophet Isaiah. Whenever I hear these words of Isaiah and whenever I hear the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, it's construction language. It is about building up a new way of looking at the world, leveling those places that are high and lifting up those places that are low to make a straight and level ground and a straight way to see that our God is near. Now, I'm no construction worker, but I do like the language of this because it has awakened me as I look around Rochester. Have you noticed it too, all of the projects throughout our community? I've never been a a mover of the earth, but I certainly have been marveling at that, whether it's the leveling of buildings when I leave St. Mary's Hospital after hospital visits and now I can see straight across to the KFC. Wow, that building is gone. And there is construction work happening there. Where I go down to the South Walmart and I notice what used to be a huge retaining wall and now it is level ground. This work that we are called to do, that we are beckoned, hearkened to in the gospel and in Isaiah is construction work to construct for the world a different way of seeing, a different way of living so that those places that are high up can be made low, those places where there are valleys can be made smooth and level ground. And that opening that up, opening into the chaos, is a clear vision of our God at work revealed in Jesus Christ. A powerful word. You are construction workers today. You have this important calling, this important work to be about. So we need not lament in the midst of our exiles and struggles. Maybe again, Charles Schultz can give us a little bit of perspective. Stop worrying about the world ending today. It's already tomorrow in Australia. (laughs) Reminds me of last week and our words about being awake and watchful and aware. That shouldn't paralyze us in a place of fear. But whenever God's word comes to us, it frees us to not live in fear, but to proclaim comfort and hope. Linus seems to get this as well beyond his blankie and thumb sucking. There is no better teacher than the Holy Spirit and no better text than God's word. God's word is our great comfort. God's word is that which continues to provide good news It provides a sense of redemption and release and hope. Jesus Christ is that good news proclaimed clearly in this day. So I ask you again, 
what brings you comfort? Or perhaps rephrasing the question, when has God's word spoken into the chaos or the exilic moments in your life and offered you the comfort that you needed to hear? Maybe that place is today. Maybe you are feeling in that place of exile, or maybe you have remembered a time when that word came to you clearly. Lutherans aren't big on having testimonials, but I will offer a personal testimonial to you this morning, a time when I desperately needed to hear and to be reminded of God's promises and the fulfillment of them. In October of 2010, I was here among you at our regular Reformation Sunday morning worship service. It was a marvelous celebration, as it always is, but internally, I felt in a place of exile. It had been nearly three months since the finalization of my marriage, a divorce that had come in that August of that year, and I was continually reeling in grief. There were good days, and there were very difficult days. And that particular Sunday, as most Sundays are, was a moment of reprieve, of rest, and of an opportunity to gather in worship with all of you and to be reminded of God's presence. Sometimes that came in powerful ways. Sometimes it was more difficult than others. But this particular Reformation Sunday morning, we sang together what we always do on Reformation Sunday, a mighty fortress is our God. I must have sung it a million times. But this particular Sunday, verse 4, spoke a word to me that I needed to hear. Listen to those verses. Actually, will you just sing them with me? We don't need the organ or piano. We know this by heart. God's word forever shall abide. No thanks to foes who fear it. For God himself fights by our side with weapons of the Spirit. Were they to take our felt like it had been wrenched away. The listening of those things, goods, honor, child, or spouse, suddenly had a whole new meaning to me on that morning. But then there was that word of promise and hope. They cannot win the day. These powers that threaten to pull us away from faith or hope or promise cannot pull us away because God's word forever shall abide. The kingdom's ours forever. Oh, how I needed to hear that. And seven years later, I can say with even more conviction, God continually sees us through those places of exile with that word of comfort and hope. Isaiah's word this morning, Mark's gospel message to us today does not eliminate the struggles you are facing, the conflict within our world. It will not erase that, does not even lessen our brokenness as humanity. But it does offer you a word of comfort if you are searching for hope. And it does give us the opportunity to proclaim to those who cannot fathom this that God's word does forever abide, that God's word stands no matter the changes and chances of life. This is our one sure and certain hope. And we look to the babe in the manger, Jesus, the Christ child, to be that beacon of hope again in this season. For whether we are in the midst of turmoil or joy and wonder. God will and still provide comfort to our short 
and our frail lives. Amen. Please rise and sing.